Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a 70s retro text effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions that I've got to get out of the way before we begin. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using uh, Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And let's name this uh, 70s retro text effect. Because that's what we're making. Uh, the width that we're going to use is 3,840 pixels by a height of 2,160 pixels, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background contents, doesn't matter, we'll be changing that anyway. Our color profile is going to be Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. Let's hit create and we are now ready to begin. So the first thing that we have to do is change our foreground color to the proper color that we want it to be. And the color that we're looking for is D. 9CF9D and that is this kind of uh, I guess muted yellow uh, kind of ugly brown light brown I I'm not really sure what color that is I'm gonna hit OK and that is now our color we're gonna fill our entire background with this color by hitting alt and backspace to fill our background with the color and you can now see that we have this horrible color back here. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to unlock and rename this background as background uh, and we're unlocking it so that we can do some effects to the background. So let's uh, double click on the name background and let's name this as background. Sounds silly I know. Uh, and hit OK and we now have a fully editable version of our background layer that is called background. Once we have that, we're going to go down here to our layer styles. We're going to add a new layer style and the layer style that we're going to put on there is going to be a pattern overlay effect. So let's click on pattern overlay and the, uh, the pattern overlay effect that we're putting on is going to be a blend mode of luminosity. Opacity is going to be at 15%. Uh, the pattern that we're looking for is this guy called Stone 80 by 80. Uh, and you can find that if you don't see it is by clicking here on the little arrow and then going over here to the sprocket, going down to Artist Surfaces, hitting OK. Uh, and then it will replace all of your patterns with these patterns that you see here. And what we're looking for is the second one here, which is our stone 80 by 80. Once you have it selected, the scale that we're looking for is 700% and link with layer is checked. Once we have all of that, hit OK, and we are now done with our background layer. Next up, what we want to do is we want to change our foreground color to the next color that we are going to need. So we're going to hit on our foreground color and we're going to change that color to 7F9C94, which is this very uh, muted teal color. We're going to then hit OK. The next thing that we need to do is we want to zoom as far out as is comfortable for us. So uh, the way that you can do that, if you have it set up in your preferences, and I'm not going to show you how right now, but just know that in your preferences for Photoshop, you can set it up so that the scroll wheel on your mouse moves you in and out of zoom. So I can scroll backwards to zoom out and scroll forward to zoom in. Another way to do this is you go to your zoom tool, uh, which is Z on the keyboard like so, and then you uh, hold down Alt for zooming out and then you just click and click and click and click and click. As you can tell, zooming in and out using the, the scroll wheel is a lot faster and easier. Another way to do it is to go way down here at the bottom left hand side of your Photoshop window and there is a little percentage marker there and you can type in something like 10%, hit enter and there you go, it's now a 10% zoom. Any one of those ways will work as long as you can see a large amount of the area outside of your image. Now once you can see as much as you can, what we want to do is get to our custom shape tool. Now you can get there by hitting U on the keyboard which will bring up the shape tool uh, which usually sits on the rectangle tool. Now you can also hold shift and then 
click U until you see this kind of blobby thing, which is the custom shape tool. Or you can just click here on the custom shape tool, holding down the left mouse button, and then scroll down to the custom shape tool, click, and you're done. Any way you want to get there, get there because this is where we need to be. The next thing is we want to make sure that we are on shape. Fill is going to be the color that we have chosen in our foreground color. Stroke is no stroke. Uh, none of these other things matter until we get to the shape that we're looking for. And the shape that we're looking for is this guy right here, which is the registration target 2. And if you don't see all of these symbols, what you need to do is click on the little sprocket and then go down here to symbols. Click on symbols, hit OK, and it will replace your shapes with all of these different symbols. And we're looking for the one way down here towards the bottom that is the registration target 2. Once you see it, click on it, and we are ready to begin drawing the shape on our image. Okay, so holding down the shift button to keep our uh, shapes uh, uh, size in the same perspective as it was originally done, in this case a circle. So you hold down shift and then drag outwards and you will see that you create a very large shape. Once you have created this very large shape, you want to go to your move tool, which you can get to up here or by clicking V on the keyboard like that. Uh, and then you can just move this shape until the uh, main circle of it is down here at the lower left hand side of the image, making sure that uh, the burst that you have here goes well outside of the image so that you don't run into any problems with the, uh, with the burst showing up at the corners. So here we go, we've got this, uh, this shape right here towards the uh, bottom left hand corner of our image. Once we have that, we can then go back to the move tool over here uh, and then hit control and zero uh, to fill our image to the full size like so. That will make the image fill your screen. If you go to control one, that will make it at 100%. Control zero will fill your screen with your image. So now that we can see our image, what we want to do is we want to change our shape name. So double click on the shape one name and let's name this burst. Hit enter and we now have our burst layer. And what we want to do is we want to apply some uh, layer effects to our burst. We're going to do two layer effects, a stroke and a pattern overlay. Now the pattern overlay is going to be very similar to the pattern overlay that we put on our background, but the uh, stroke is going to be a custom stroke. So let's start with that. Let's make sure that our burst layer is selected. Let's go down here to our layer effects and let's go to stroke. Now the stroke that we're looking for uh, is going to be a size of 24, a position of outside, blend mode is normal, opacity is going to be 45%, overprint is unchecked, fill type is going to be a gradient. I'll tell you the gradient in just a moment. Let's continue on right here. We're going to make sure that reverse is unchecked, align with layer is checked, shape burst is the style that we want. So you click on that, go all the way to the bottom here for shape burst. Angle is going to be zero. It shouldn't really matter, but we're going to make it zero. Dither is unchecked. Scale is going to be 100%. Now for the gradient itself, we need five gradient stops. As you can see, one, two, three, four, and five. And the way that you create these gradient stops is you click on a gradient and then you just click and you create a new gradient. If you need to get rid of a gradient, you just drag it off and you've gotten rid of a gradient. So there we've got five gradients and we're going to, uh, we're going to change their color for each one and their location for each one. So the first one that we want is going to be a location of zero and the color that we're going to use is going to be 98855A. Then we're going to hit OK and then we're going to click on our second uh, stop. The location that we want that one to be is 25%. And the color that we want here is going to be A78D5D. And we're going to hit OK once we have that. The next thing that we're going to want is the third one, which is going to be a location of 46%. Color here is going to be another brownish color, B0915D. So that's B0915D. Hit OK. And then we're going to go to our fourth uh, color stop and we're going to make a location of 67% and the color is going to be a lighter brown and it's going to be C4B586. Then we're going to hit OK and the next one and last one is going to be location 100% and the color is going to be this brownish yellow kind of gunky color ECEABF. 
Okay, and feel free to pause the video if you need to write these down. Uh, I'm going over them quickly because you can always pause to see them and I don't have to wait for you. So hit OK once you've got all of these in. Hit OK again and we now have our stroke. And as you can see, it makes this nice little kind of gradient on uh, the outside of our burst. The next thing that we want to do is give this entire burst a, uh, a look of the texture that we put on our background. So we're going to go back to our pattern overlay. Now the pattern overlay is going to be very similar. Uh, so we don't have to change much. We're going to leave it at luminosity. We're going to change the opacity here to only 25% instead of 15. Everything else should stay the same. So our pattern should still be our stone 80 by 80 and scale should be 700% and link width layer is checked. Hit OK, and as you can see, we now have the texture inside and outside of our burst, which is great because that's what we want. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a little bit more texture to our background. So we're going to add a layer of noise on top of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer. So go to the bottom of your layer pal palette and click on the little new layer icon. And we're going to name this layer noise because we're going to add noise to this. Now what we also have to do is change our foreground and background to their plain black and white. So let's hit D on the keyboard to do that. That changes it to the default of black and white. And then on the noise layer, making sure that the noise layer is selected, let's hit Alt and Backspace to fill it with black. Once we have filled it with black, let's go to Filter, Noise, and add Noise. And the noise that we're looking to add is going to be 50% Gaussian and monochromatic. Hit OK, and uh, that gives us everything that we need there. So now all we have to do is change our layer mode to the layer mode that we need. So then the, uh, the layer mode that we want it to be is going to be screen, and we want to change its opacity to only 70%, like so. We now have a lot of noise on our background and it looks kind of retro 70-ish. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the text and put it right over the circle to hide the circle so that it looks like a burst is coming from the text. So we're going to create, uh, well we don't really need to create a brand new layer so let's not even do that. Let's use our text tool. Let's go to T for text tool or you can go over here and just click on the text tool like so. Okay, once you have your text tool, you have to pick your font. Now the font I'm using is called Lemon Drop. Uh, I've got a link in the description below where you can download Lemon Drop for free. Okay, and uh, once you have that installed, then you can create this or you can use any font that you want that reminds you of the 70s. Now the, uh, the font size that I'm going to use is gonna be, oh, let's say about 230 points. Okay, uh, and really that's all that you need. We'll be changing the color of it so it doesn't really matter what color we're starting with. So let's click over here and as always, I'm going to do pixel. Oh, and let's go underneath and make it magic. Okay, and that is our text. Now, as you can see, uh, my text is running over itself as you can see there. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, increase the spacing here uh, between my text, but we want it to stay fairly close. Okay, so, uh, so somewhere around there. I've got it at 232. Let's just make it 230 by 230. There. That, that should be fine. I think 230 by 230. And if we need to change it, we always can because it is text that is easy to change. So let's put this right about here-ish, like so. Uh, and now what we want to do is fix the kerning. So let's go back to our text tool here. And we want to fix the kerning in between the letters. Now pixel looks like it's okay. Magic, however, the G here is a little far away from that A. So let's uh, click in between. And the way that we change our kerning or the spacing in between our letters is by putting our cursor in between the letters that we want to change the spacing for and then hold down Alt and we use our arrow keys on the keyboard, the left and right arrow keys, to move things closer or further away. So the left arrow key will move things closer, and the right arrow key will move them further apart. So I think that's good, and the A needs to be slightly further apart. And I think that that looks good, so let's hit the check mark, and we are now ready to begin putting some uh, layer styles on our text. So the layer effects that we're going to be putting on here are going to be three strokes and one drop shadow. Okay, so 
making sure that our text layer is selected. We're gonna go down here to layer styles. We're gonna hit stroke and we're gonna go over here to our layer styles. Now, we don't need our stroke to be this gradient thing anymore, so we can reset this back to default. Okay, and the size that we're looking for over here is gonna be a size of five. The uh, position that we want is from the center. The blend mode that we want is gonna be normal. The opacity is gonna be 100%, overprint is gonna be off, fill type is gonna be color, and the color that we want for this first one is gonna be as follows, 600945. That is our first color, hit OK, and there is our first color. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're gonna add a new stroke. So you're gonna hit this little plus over here to add a new stroke. Okay, once we have our new stroke, what we're going to do is we're going to make the size of our new stroke is going to be 40. The position is going to stay as, uh, is going to go to outside. Our blend mode is going to stay as normal. Our opacity is going to stay as 100%. Overprint will stay uh, unchecked. Our fill type is still going to be color. And the color that we're using this time is going to be uh, D2, uh, let's see, C, nine nine six c nine nine six so the same basic color as our background color okay we're going to hit okay and then we're going to add our third stroke our third stroke which is going to be our bottom stroke here so we've got uh, the top stroke is going to be this uh, purpley color the middle stroke is going to be this uh, kind of brownish beigeish color and the bottom stroke here is going to be a completely different look and we're going to make this uh, 54 pixels. We're going to make the position is going to be outside. Normal is going to be the blend mode. Opacity is going to be 100%. Overprint is still off. We're still using our color and the color that we're using now is going to be, uh, let's see here, 7193888. There, uh, a nice teal color. Hit OK and we now have a nice teal looking color on the outside of our text. Next, we are going to add a color overlay to our text. So let's click on color overlay and our blend mode is going to be normal. The color that we're looking for, however, is not black. The color that we're looking for is going to be A, B, five, nine, nine, six. Okay, a nice kind of very bright purpley color. Opacity is going to be 100%. Next and last is going to be our drop shadow. Now, drop shadow is going to be uh, normal. And we're going to make the color over here a nice deep dark brown. So it's going to be uh, 50421F. Okay, 50421F. Hit OK. The angle that we're going to do, make sure that you have used global light unchecked. Ooh, I forgot about opacity. Opacity is going to be 100%. Make sure our use global light is unchecked and uh, we're going to want this to be at 45 degrees like so. Uh, and then we're going to make it uh, 59. We're going to make the spread of uh, 100. We're going to make the size uh, 54. Okay, the contour is going to be linear. Anti-alias is going to be on. Noise is going to be at 0%. Uh, layer knocks out drop shadow is going to be on and that is all the effects that we need here to create our 70s looking text with our font now is the time that we can now move this around so let's go to our move tool or v on the keyboard and let's move this around so that it better covers the hole behind it like so i think that looks pretty good like that now what we want to do is uh we're going to add in a little bit of magic I guess, to our text. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to turn our text into a, um, uh, into a smart object. So we're going to right click on our text like so, and we're going to convert it into a smart object and it will still be named what we typed in for our text, but it is now a smart object, which means that we can apply a, um, a filter to the text uh, as a whole that will affect the text, but the text still remains fully editable. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go up here to filter, and we're gonna go to filter gallery, and we're gonna add in some grain. Now grain can be found over here under texture, so we wanna click on grain, and uh, that's the only texture that we really need. Now the intensity that we want is gonna be 30, 
like so, and the contrast that we want is going to be 45, and the grain type is going to be regular, and as you can see that that really does give it a textured, grainy effect to the text. And that's all that we really need, so hit OK, and you can see that our text now looks as grainy as our background does. And that right there is the end of this tutorial. You now have 70s retro text effect in Photoshop, complete with a background of a burst coming out of the text. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.